I just want to wish you all a happy Father's Day. Let, let's go ahead and pray as we get ready for worship. Lord God, I just come before you this morning with the people of your church, asking for your presence here amongst us, also your presence to be amongst those that are worshiping with us online. Lord, reassure us that amongst all the issues that we face in this life, that you are there with us. You're there to protect us, to lead us, but most importantly, you're there to save us. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that we pray this morning, amen. Let's begin with our first hymn. If you have a hymnal with you at home, it's hymn number 427, or maybe you've already got it up on the screen. And for those of us that are here this morning in the church, there's obviously no Bibles and hymns in the pew, so everything will be in your bulletin or up on the screen above. So let's go ahead and sing our first hymn, In the Cross of Christ I Glory. stand with me please begin in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen beloved in the lord let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto god our father beseeching him in the name of our lord jesus christ to grant us forgiveness our help is in the name of the lord I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. As we prepare ourselves this morning to make our confession before God Almighty, would you first join me for a few moments of silent prayer and reflection. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this here confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you join me now as we responsibly read from the 91st Psalm. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. You will not fear the terror of the night. nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand. You will only look with your eyes, because you have made the Lord your dwelling place. No evil shall be allowed to befall you, Continue now with the singing of the Gloria Patre. The Lord be with you. Together, let us pray. Loving God, since you have called us by the light of your truth to let that light shine through us to the world, give us the boldness, love, and strength to be your faithful witnesses. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated as we now read from the word of the Lord. The Old Testament reading is taken from Jeremiah chapter 20, beginning with verse 7. O Lord, you have deceived me, and I was deceived. You are stronger than I. 
and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all the day. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I cry out. I shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot, for I hear many whispering, terror is on every side, denounce him, let us denounce him, save all my close friends watching for my fall, perhaps he will be deceived, then we can overcome him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble. They will not overcome me. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, who tests the righteous, who sees the heart and the mind. Let me see your vengeance upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of evildoers. The epistle reading is taken from Romans chapter 6, beginning with verse 12. Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body, to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. And having been set free from sin, having become slaves of righteousness, I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented yourselves as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present yourselves as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regards to righteousness, but what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. The 
these twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will have not gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will, be, that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, for you are more of more value than the sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You join me now as we confess our faith together as we repeat the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Be seated as we prepare ourselves to sing our next hymn. And as we do, for those of you that are worshiping with us online, now's the time to make sure you send in those prayer requests. For the rest of us, we're not ha passing prayer request cards this morning. Uh, what we're going to do is when we get to that point in the service where we are offering prayers, I'll give you that opportunity just to, to voice your prayer like we've done the, for the past couple weeks. And uh, that's what we'll use uh, for this morning. So let's go ahead and sing our next hymn. It's hymn number 737, Rejoice My Heart. Be glad and sing.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 2020. <laughs> wow. What a year it has been so far. I, I think we'd all agree with that. I mean, I mean, think about it. Th this year is not even half over yet. And just think about all the things that we've seen happen so far this year. Hey, we had just woken up on New Year's morning. Some of us were getting ready to watch the Rose Parade, and, and you turn on the news, and what did we see on that very first day? Devastating wildfires that were taking over the entire continent of Australia. More than 46 million acres burned. Over 450 people lost their lives in those fires. Countless animals succumbed to the flames. Thousands of homes have been destroyed. But, but just a couple days later, on January 3rd, things changed. Now our attention was focusing on a, a, a conflict between the United States and Iran. The United States military had launched an attack against Iran's General Soleimani. Using a drone, they, they blew up the car that he was in, and that led to some harsh words between the two countries. There was a threat of war. People were wondering, is this going to be World War III? But soon, this whole issue with the Iranians was, was forgotten because a new enemy had been discovered. The day was January 7th. And on that day, China confirmed that a strange new virus was making people sick, and many people were dying. It's now been five months, and COVID-19 has caused a worldwide pandemic I mean, across the globe, over 9 million people have now become infected, and almost a half a million people have died. January 8th, Iran now responds to the, the skirmishes and, and the tensions, and they fire a missile, and it strikes a Ukrainian passenger jet. It kills all 176 passengers on board. January 16th was the beginning of President Trump's impeachment trial, and we saw how that divided our country. People were either on one side or the other. It didn't help us come together at all. It divided us even more. January 26th, we watched our television sets in shock as we saw the burning remains of a helicopter that had crashed and taken the life of Kobe Bryant, his 13-year-old daughter, and seven other people. Folks, we haven't even finished the first month of 2020 yet. But we, we've still got five more months to go. But we haven't even begun to talk about what happened on February 27th when the stock market crashed. We haven't talked about that mass shooting in Canada where 22 people were murdered. We, we still got to talk about quarantines and, and school closures and business shutdowns and, and social distancing. Our news today is filled with racial tensions and police shootings and, and riots and, and protests, and the year is not even half over. So far this year, there have been a lot of things going on, things that have captured our attention, things that are, that are really important to pay attention to. But no matter how important the events of 2020 have been so far, they don't even begin to compare how important God's message is that's revealed to us this morning in our scripture readings. Now what I'd like to do this morning is tell you to, to reach forward, grab your Bible and, and open it up, but the Bibles aren't there. So if you brought a Bible, go ahead and open it up to uh, Romans chapter 6. Otherwise, I, I'd encourage you to go ahead and, and open up your bulletin. I, I want us to go to our epistle reading this morning, and I want to spend a little time focusing in on some of these words that Paul wrote. In particular, I want you to look at verses 14 through 18 with me. Now, Harold read these just a, a few minutes ago, but I want to keep this fresh in your mind, so let's listen again, picking up at verse 14. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God 
that you who were once slaves to sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed, and having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. In the world today, sin is everywhere. No matter what you do, or even when you aren't doing anything, Satan is there tempting you to sin. He makes sin look so good. He makes it look so easy. He he lies to you, and he says, it's okay. It it really won't hurt you. I mean, look how good it looks. Look how how pleasurable it's going to be. The devil's desire is to get you to turn away from God and seek your own pleasure. And, And by doing this, he wants you to reject all that God wants to give you. Think about how he tempted Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. He comes to them and he says, you will not surely die. God knows that when you eat of it, when you eat of that that one tree that he told you not to eat from, when you eat of it, your, your eyes will be opened and you'll become like God. And then with one small, innocent looking bite, the world was changed forever. Lies. That's all that Satan has to offer are lies. And no matter how much he tries to sugarcoat temptation, the results are always the same. Look at what verse 23 of our epistle lesson says. The wages of sin is death. It's not open eyes. It's not being like God. It is death. And not just an earthly death, but but a spiritual death as well. It's an eternal separation from God. That's the only thing that Satan has to offer you. But that's not what he's going to tell you, is he? So what do we do? Because you and I know that we're tempted each and every day. And we know that we so often succumb to that temptation. We know what the result of sin is. It's death. But that's not where God wants us to be. Because you see, you are precious to God. You were created in his image, and because he loves you, he seeks you out. And that's what God revealed to Paul. And it's what he continues to reveal to us today through his word. Verse 14. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What does that mean? Well, the law shows us the standard that God demands of people if they're going to be considered righteous. It begins with the Ten Commandments, and there God point blank tells us what we shall and what we shall not do. It encompasses all that we do and all that we think. But it also includes those things that we don't do that we should be doing. The law does something else. The law also acts like a mirror, and it reflects who we really are. In its reflection, we see how we fall short of God's requirements. We see how we continue to sin over and over again and that we cannot save ourselves. And so to live under the law means that we're constantly striving to do those things that God requires of us, but they always seem to be just out of our reach. And we constantly fall short. When we see ourselves in the mirror of the law, we're constantly faced with with disappointment because we can't keep the law that God demands us to keep. And this is where grace comes in to save us. You see, even though we can't keep the law, God forgives us anyway, and this is what is called grace. But, But it's not free. A price has to be paid. But you and I are unable to make this payment. So God has now given us his only begotten son, Jesus, to pay the price for us. You see, Jesus, because he's divine, is able to keep the law perfectly in our stead. And because he's man, he's able to give up his life as a repayment for our sin. Because Jesus is both God and man at the same time, we are now able to receive the reward That he has earned for us. Jesus bought you with his own blood on the cross. He paid the price that we deserve because of our sins. And so now, instead of receiving the punishment that we deserve, we receive God's forgiveness 
and the gift of eternal life. And not because we deserve it. Not because we've earned it. But solely because God wants to give it to us. Because he loves us. And that's what we mean by grace. But here's the thing. Satan still continues to try to deceive us. He wants us to doubt God's grace. He wants us to trust the law for our salvation. He says, just do it yourself. You can do it. You know what's right and what's wrong. Just do those things. Rely on that. Don't rely on Jesus. My friends, don't listen to the devil's lies. I love the way Paul addresses this in Ephesians chapter 2. It's one of my favorite verses of the Bible. In in, in verses 8 and 9, he says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works, so that no one can boast. Out of all the things that have competed for our attention this year, perhaps nothing has invoked more emotion and, and passion and this issue of racial equality that we're seeing on our television sets every day. We all know the history of slavery in this country. We know the scars that is left behind. And so I came across a story, and I don't even know if it's a true story, but this story perfectly illustrates this biblical principle that's behind our text this morning. And I'd like to read the story to you. It was a few years before the Civil War. It was a time in which life in the United States was very different from today. Deep in the South, the great city of Savannah, commotion could be heard. A large crowd had gathered for a public auction. Out of the crowd, an uncouth, foul-mouthed, loud, boisterous man could be heard. He had a reputation for being one of the meanest, cruelest, and most hateful men around. But in the crowd, there was another man. This man was known for his dignity, for his genteel mannerisms, for his soft-spoken tone. He had a reputation as being one of the most kind, gentle, and gracious men around. Both men, along with the crowd, were waiting for the auction to begin. Finally, the auctioneer stepped up to the podium and began to rattle off his words as the first item to be sold was brought to the auction block. There, standing before the crowd, was a beautiful young black girl, about 20 years of age. Her dress was old and torn, but remarkably clean. She was obviously filled with anxiety and fear as the bidding began. From the outset, the loud, obnoxious man seemed to have his evil, lecherous eyes on this lovely, innocent young lady. She obviously knew of his reputation and cringed in fear as he opened the bidding. When the kind gentleman saw her fear, he too placed a bet. Soon only these two men were involved in the bidding as the price of the girl rose higher and higher. Finally, the evil man bowed out of the bidding when he realized that The price of the girl was more than what he was willing to pay. When the auctioneer closed the bidding, the kind gentleman paid the price for his purchase, was handed the bill of sale, and then walked away to leave. The young girl started to follow her new master, and it was then that he turned around and asked her, where are you going? Well, I'm going with you, she responded. You bought me, and I belong to you. Oh, You misunderstood, the man said. I I didn't buy you to make you my slave. I bought you to set you free. He then took the bill of sale and wrote across it with big block letters, F-R-E-E, free. He then signed his name and gave it to the girl. I don't understand, the girl said. You mean I'm free? Yes, you're free. I can go wherever I want and do whatever I please? Exactly. You're free. Mister, I I don't know who you are, but no one has ever shown such love and kindness to me. If I am 
free to do as I please, then nothing would please me more than to go with you and serve you till the day I die. And with that, she went home with the man, not as a slave, but as a willing servant. Like I said, I, I don't know if the story is true or not. My guess is that it isn't. But doesn't it wonderfully illustrate this incredible doctrine of justification? It tells the story of our slavery to sin and to Satan, of the cruel intentions of the enemy of our soul. But it also tells of this gracious purchase at an incredible price that Jesus made for us, not to make us his slaves, but to set us free. So how could we respond in any other way than to say, if you love me that much, then I will serve you forever. 2020 is turning out to be a year like no other. But no matter what happens this year, no matter how this year ends, I pray that the following words from St. Paul will be at the center of your life and give you the hope and the courage that you need to face each new day. And those words are these. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in the one true faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. This time I'd like to invite you to stand with me as we pray together the prayers of the church. And let's see if any prayer requests have come in yet. Okay. As I pray with you this morning, I'll end each of our petitions with the words, Lord, in your mercy. And I invite you to respond with hear our prayer. And as we get to that point in which we would, I would normally uh, read those petitions that you would send up, uh, because of the social distancing and the uh, not passing papers around with each other, uh, I'll open up and give you a chance to voice a prayer if you so feel moved. Let us pray. Merciful Father, hear us as we pray in the name of Jesus on behalf of all people in their time of need as well as their time of rejoicing. Faithful God, when we are fearful of our enemies and weary of the struggle, you have been our shield and our strength. Grant to us the full measure of your grace to sustain us against all who are against us and help us to endure the trials and temptations of this mortal life and remain faithful unto death. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, with your favor upon us, we pray that you would help us in our fight against temptation and sin. Help us to live holy and righteous lives by the power of your Holy Spirit and keep us from surrendering ourselves to the slavery from which Christ has set us free. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we remember those who serve us in Jesus' name. Bless the leaders of our synod, all pastors and teachers and all church workers. May they be faithful in their calling and honor Christ with an obedient life. Lord, in your mercy. Father God, we thank you for the gift of our earthly fathers. We lift them to you and ask you to grant them wisdom and the ability to love their children as you have loved us. For those fathers who have been absent, for those who have been abusive, for those who have neglected their calling, we pray for forgiving hearts for the children and families that have suffered at their hands. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, give healing and strength to the sick and all afflicted in body or mind. Grant to those who struggle the gift of peace and mind. Hear us especially for those we bring before you now in these petitions and those we pray for in our hearts. Lord, we pray for Aubrey. We ask that you lay your healing hands on her so that soon she and her mother can re return home from Mexico. 
We pray for Dolores, who's 91 years old and recently fell. Lord, she's in a lot of pain, and, and we just ask that you would remove that pain, that you would heal and strengthen her body. We pray for Doug as he continues to, to fight cancer and undergoes chemotherapy treatment. Lord, th this has not been an easy road for him. We pray, Lord, that you would strengthen him, that he would see and feel your presence there amongst him, knowing that you're walking with him as he goes through this difficult time. We pray for Bill, who's in the hospital. We ask you, Lord, that you would heal his body and that soon as he is released, that he would be able to find a suitable place to live. Lord, we pray for the family of Randy, who lost his fight with brain cancer just the other day. Lord, we know that Randy is with you now, but there are many left behind who are grieving. Lord, give us the comfort, the strength, and the reassurance we need to face each day, knowing that no matter what happens in this earthly life, as long as we cherish and hold on to this gift of faith that you have given us, you will make all things right in the end. I now open it up to all of you in the congregation. If there's a, a prayer or someone that you would like to pray for, even a, a moment of praise to God, a, a moment of thanksgiving, I encourage you to speak those prayers now. Lord, we also pray for a grandson who's going through a very difficult time right now. Lord, give him clarity of thought. Allow him to accept the help and the love that his family is trying to offer him. Allow him to get through this difficult time and realize that he is loved by so many. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of mercy, we live in a world corrupted by sin. We've not always loved our neighbors as ourselves. In fact, we've often mistreated and abused each other. Be with our nation as we continue to deal with the issue of racism. May we learn from our past and not repeat our sins, but may we move forward as one people and enjoy the freedom and liberty that our nation embraces. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful God, Sanctify us as your people and make us bold to confess you on earth. When this earthly life is ended and we stand before you on high, grant us to hear the Savior's acknowledgement that we are his and he is ours forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, Heavenly Father, we pray for in the name of your Son, Jesus who died and rose and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit as one God, now and forevermore. Hear us as we pray as he has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. May be seated as we prepare to sing our closing hymn. But before we do, uh, a couple things I would just like to bring to your attention. Uh, first of all, our Bible studies are now beginning to open up again. Uh, we are practicing social distancing, so we've got a lot of space between everybody, but uh, our, our, our adult class on uh, Tuesdays with Jesus is meeting again on Tuesday mornings, and then our men's Bible study is uh, meeting again on Saturday mornings, and uh, all the times and locations and everything is in your, your, your bulletin this morning. Um, our, our ladies' study is not quite there yet. They're hoping to get things uh, put together soon, and uh, hopefully within a few weeks or so, uh, they'll be able to start meeting, and we'll let you know about that. 
And then our Sunday morning Bible study, uh, we're going to be having them start to meet uh, in the beginning of, Je of July. I uh, just want to make sure everything is taken care of in here and that uh, everything's working smoothly. But uh, the first Sunday in July, we'll uh, again have our, our Sunday morning Bible study. Uh, the um, superstars, um, they're not going to meet for a while. Uh, they're just such a high-risk group of folks, and we want to make sure that uh, we're able to keep them safe, uh, as well as uh, children's uh, Sunday school. Uh, we're holding off on that right now for a little while uh, until we're able to uh, make sure that uh, we can keep them safe as well. But uh, little by little, we're seeing things happen. We're seeing uh, ministries begin to open up again, and I just pray that you uh, practice those things that we need to do to keep each other safe and healthy, virus-free, and that soon uh, this will all come to an end and we can be back to business as usual. God's blessings to each and every one of you. And would you join me now as we sing our closing hymn this morning, hymn number 685, Let Us Ever Walk With Jesus.